Keeping hydrated during exercise is important, um, but it's probably not the, the, the main problem during exercise, unless we're exercising in environmental extremes, particularly in very hot environments. From a physiological perspective, it probably doesn't make a great deal of difference for those shorter duration activities at, at moderate intensity. You don't need to drink uh, sports drinks, you don't need glucose or sugar input for that shorter duration of time. Anything less than an hour is really unli unlikely to improve performance. So metabolic rate rises during exercise. Once you've finished exercise, metabolic rate drops relatively quickly down to resting levels. The harder the exercise is, the higher intensity the exercise, the longer the duration of exercise, the longer it takes for that metabolic rate to drop to resting levels. In the normal population, really increasing metabolic rate during exercise is where we increase calorie consumption and then outside of that exercise we don't see a great deal of difference. The chronic response or the response that occurs and peaks around 24 to 48 to 72 hours post-exercise is actually associated with muscle damage. Exercise, particularly if, if you undertake a novel exercise, and often people feel the greatest amount of damage when they start a new sport or, or when they, they take up a new exercise at, at the gym. And what's happening there is that the muscle is unaccustomed to that type of contractile process during exercise. And so therefore you get a great deal of damage. In response to that damage, we have cell swelling, so we have fluid coming into the, into the muscle cell itself which causes expansion of the, of, the, of the cell. That then causes pain. The delayed onset muscle soreness, this general soreness around the muscle, that's really important for the adaptive response of the muscle, in other words, for the muscle to, to get stronger. Uh, what we don't want to do is blunt that response by intervening with various different areas like icing, like anti-inflammatory medications. Uh, however, what you can do is you can reduce the symptoms of that pain and things like heating, so hot baths or using the sauna, things like stretching, things like massage. Whilst they won't accelerate the adaptive response, what they will do is that they will reduce the symptoms, usually only for the duration of time that you undertake them. How much exercise is good for you? I mean, from government guidelines, from the World Health Organization, WHO guidelines, it tends to be somewhere in the region of 150 minutes per week. Uh, and they subdivide that into five 30-minute blocks of moderate intensity activity. And the key question is, what is moderate? Moderate, in essence, is a brisk walk or a slow jog. It's the type of intensity that you can sustain a full conversation, but, but only just you're at the risk of losing words. So that, that's what we tend to tell people. Uh, I think the, the more recent work, interestingly enough, tells us that we can do that in shorter periods of time and we can actually pick it up in pockets of exercise. So we, five minutes worth of exercise at a higher intensity can give us the same physiologic yield, the same improvement as it can for longer duration at lower intensity. But fundamentally, more is better. Uh, moderate intensity is often the, the intensity we look for because it's tolerable and it's still enjoyable. Um, but effectively, if you're looking for how much exercise we should do, we should do more than we're currently doing. Uh, we should enjoy it and do as much as we can.